Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Paul Trady here. Shauna Hi. Lynn in the house. Yeah. Is that what your mom calls you, like, maybe when you're in trouble? No. Shauna Lynn? She's never called me Shauna Lynn. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because you've never been in trouble. Is that why? <laughs> no, no. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have you here. Good uh, to be here. Day two. Day two. Yes. This is yeah. good. So, want to welcome you. Uh, welcome Thanks. everybody in chat. Uh, Paul, Victoria, Julia, mm. Jan Eric as well. Fantastic. Val. Hi, Val. Val's in the house, so um, yeah. it's good. It's good times. So thanks for hanging out with us. It's all day Photoshop, all day today, as it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, you can chat, catch up with her session from yesterday in the replays mm -hmm. tab. Um, you know, maybe we'll do like a quick review uh, what you made yesterday or something yeah, at some point. It would be kind of nice to open that up. Yeah, get that open. Just to remind everybody, we're going to do a random or not so random giveaway, seeing as it's going to happen in uh, about 28 minutes. And mm -hmm. then we also have the challenge for the last time going on today. Uh, so the daily challenge for today, which yesterday was really fun. I can kind of review the winner because I don't think you've seen oh, the winner. Oh, no, I haven't. Uh, for creating that surreal scene. Today is all about making a postcard for your hometown, which is very appropriate for what you've been kind of working mm -hmm. on. And then tomorrow is all about portfolio reviews. So yeah. make stuff, put it in your portfolio, and we might review it tomorrow. But this is your last chance to uh, get something in, and mm -hmm. we will pick a winner at the end of the day. Yeah. And uh, they get a Creative Cloud uh, for a year. Beautiful. And that's the idea. So, yeah. It's a great prize. Yeah, who won yesterday? Oh, yeah. Let me, I will <laughs> show you because I happen to have it right over here. Congratulations. Chelsea Skinner made this fun piece with huh. the squirrel. <laughs> I like it. Isn't that funny? It is. Yeah, it's kind of cute. He's it's like, like, get it. out of my bar. Yeah. You've he's had like, enough. <laughs> he's, he's looking at you like, what are you doing in here? And you're like, what's a squirrel like, you know, working behind the bar? Yeah. You know, it's like easily giving each other weird looks. <laughs> yeah. So that's the winner. Yeah, I like Shout it. Shout out. Chelsea did a great job. Everybody did a great job. We'd love to review all of them, but uh, let's get involved. And I love what, thank you so much for op pulling this up, by the way. Yeah, of course. Looks like you had some fun. You did kind of I do did. a little, um, a little bit more work at the bar. I don't know. It's like, I, no, or, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do a thing last <laughs> night. <laughs> no, I, yes, yeah, so this is what we did yesterday. We did stamp studies based off of uh, uh, some couple of vintage stamps I found. We took this, um, little orangutan one and I kind of made him into a little fancy monkey. Mm. Um, That's so fun. yeah, so like keeping with with that, today I'm doing a postcard. And originally I was gonna do hometown, but my hometown is is Daytona Beach and that doesn't give me a ton to work with. Other than yeah. like NASCAR, Bike Week, or Spring Break. That's what uh, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, all three of which I detest. So <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I decided I'm gonna draw something I love. So Orlando is my adopted hometown, and Disney. Nice. So we have. Um, I was thinking I'm just gonna do like a poll and see what chat mm -hmm. thinks, but I have um, the Big Thunder Mountain or Haunted Mansion. So those are the two, Thunder Mountain or Haunted Mansion. Mm -hmm. You have both uh, both files set yes. up and ready to go. So it's just at this point. Paco might it's... have an opinion here for these two being yeah. from Orlando as well. Mm -hmm. Are you from or uh, or outside of? I grew up. Okay, in Orlando. Yeah. Like, okay, awesome. What um, do you vote for, Paco? Haunted Mansion, or what was the other one? Big Thunder Mountain. Big Thunder Mountain. I like the Haunted Mansion. I, that's kind of looking Mansion like, like Haunted fun. Mansion's sort of winning right now. I also saw someone ask about Kyle's brushes for the pencil tool. Are you talking about the one over here? The um, bitmap pencil? Because I think some of his do, but I don't know for sure if any of his are specifically this pencil. Hmm. Um, my anchor is because I like having no aliasing around mine. Yeah, it makes it easier to select and um, yeah, all sorts of things. So I will uh, make sure I get that link posted for your. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot uh, of brushes. 
I'm seeing a lot of Haunted that's, Mansion. Oh, it's... yay, Val did a straw poll, thank you. All right, that works. All right, so we'll just sit back and wait a minute and see what they say. I'm voting. See what the masses say. <laughs> I'm, Thunder Mountain, can you switch to that other PSD, by yeah. the way, just so I can kind of quickly get... Thunder Mountain is the, the wilderness ride one where it's, oh, okay. it's this guy, where you're on the train and the wooden track. That's and it looks like the Wild of, West. That's fun too. Um, and then you have, of course, the Haunted Mansion, which is this dark, foreboding, lovely thing with the hat box ghosts, the stretching portraits, the dapper dance, um, the haunted library, mm. the bride, and I love these statues with the twins. Yeah, that's freaky. Um. Yeah, I don't know, are they, so if I went to the Haunted Mansion in Orlando, is it the same one that's in um, in Disneyland? Yes, with the exception of Christmas time, because the Disneyland one does that uh, Nightmare Before Christmas transformation mm. every year, and Orlando's does not. Got it, So it's, it's really cool. Yeah, I love it, I, it, it's, it, Haunted Mansion is my favorite ride at Disney. Yeah. I easily could ride it over and over and over again, and I would never get tired of it. I see you trying to sway the vote. <laughs> and so far, Haunted Mansion is winning. Oh man, this see, is this right is here. a close one though. There's so, only been ten votes. Come on, guys. I can try to. I can. I can probably vote from a different device, maybe. Yeah, vote again. from like every device <laughs> possible. How many people are in <clears> chat? <throat> come on, come on, chop chop. And uh, so this will be good. So yeah. e like either one will be will be interesting because they're yeah. highly highly visual. It's just kind of whatever s style you want to. Yeah. You could do. What if you did haunted Thunder Mountain? I think s technically Thunder Mountain is supposed to kind of be a little haunted, to mm. a degree, because it's it like it's supposed to be like the train kind of goes, um, out of control. Yeah, so uh, Chris, right above where you posted where do we vote is the link. So it's right, up, right yeah. above that. Uh, I just saw Paul asked, how long have I worked at the Surface Pro? I've been on it for two to three years. I think two years now. I got it just after Icon in 2016, so this would be like my third year with it. And there's Anna Davis Courts here. She's one of the creative residents, huh? Yeah, she does like fantastic work. She really does, uh, she's very talented. Yeah, she's she's way cool. So she and I, when we met up at this. Icon this past year, we, we switched our devices. She has the Mobile Studio Pro from Wacom and I have the Surface and we were playing on each other's things. It was great. Yeah, just a little shout out to her. See, now she's a resident and she's in chat and she's from uh, Portland, she's just north of us. Good to have you here. She's awesome. awesome. All, right. I, All right, I said it's time to close the poll. I agree. How? Let's see where we're at. Let's hit refresh. refresh. View results. All right. It and looks you can like see Haunted Mansion one. Haunted Mansion, yay! Secretly, I'm really excited about that. So. I would have liked it if you. Had, what if you had everybody vote and you just like kind of did your own and it, like you went against the poll? We did that last time. I'm okay with that. <laughs> like, you're kind of the boss, so. Or we can... all no, we almost did that last time because if I had done that last time, it would have been um, the Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of Number Four Privet Drive were proud to say that they are perfectly normal. Thank you very much. Thing. Instead, we which did. is not a short quote. No, not at all. Mm. It would have been a two-page spread. Mm. Okay, so I'm gonna do the. Um, so since we're doing like hometown postcards. I'm doing Grim Grinning Ghosts, come out to socialize, and then I'm doing a little visit the Haunted Mansion today. So almost like it's a little- oh, that's fun. Yeah, like a little advertisement postcard. Um, and I'm thinking I'm gonna probably try and throw in like these little, uh, these little characters here. Um, they're super fun. The way the Haunted Mansion does their animatronic heads now is so cool because they project onto them so that they are super animated. Um, and it looks really cool. 
I would say on that note, by the way, since Anna is here, I just stumbled across her uh, one of her like uh, residency submission, her second submission, which is kind of haunted-ish, you know, yeah. this whole thing. Which could, that's oh, kind of I was so wondering, cute. like her stuff's like really cute and fun and light and just awesome. Yeah. And uh, this just goes to show how awesome it is. Anna, I'd like to see you do something like a Coco-inspired piece because I feel like you'd do Miguel really good justice. And I think her, man, yeah, her work is just really good. So I'm working on um, a five by seven artboard. So the difference between this and just using a five by seven document is I can throw all this stuff on the outside of my artboard, which is fantastic because then I don't have to jump in and out of mm. programs. Very nice. Uh, it's kind of like, a lot of people do that with uh, like Illustrator. Yeah. They just have a bunch of stuff everywhere. Yeah, cute. Anna Davis Court says, gotta love cute spooky. And I think she does pull off cute really well and cute spooky is, I like that contrast of cute and spooky is kind of fun. Yeah, I agree. So. All right, I'm gonna go really loose with this to start. Love it. Work it. And uh, yeah, let me get that link for everybody. So Shauna's working on a Surface Pro. What uh, what version is that? I don't even know. Like, they have like a six out now, I think. So this was Surface Pro 4 from a few years ago. Surface Pro 4, got it. Yeah. Um, let's see. There you go. Uh, brushes, the brushes. Uh, oh, we can share that link Shana. again for the yeah. Yeah, I just just posted it. You are one step ahead of me. <sighs> yes. Ooh, you'll love this. Anna's doing uh, Harry Potter book cover. Did I see? What? Uh, Share I it. I want to see. Book cover for her portfolio right now. Girl. We talked about Harry Potter for a little bit yesterday. Yeah, I want to see it. Do you do you find that, <laughs> like I think this with like Val. You, you just end up talking about like, do you sometimes find yourself end up talking about like Harry Potter sometimes? Or mm -hmm. I, don't, I think with Val, like most of the time it veers toward, you know, Star, Star Wars. Wars. Or she could make any conversation turn into a Star Wars conversation. Yeah. <laughs> my um, my yeah. best friend and I, our entire friendship is based off of Harry Potter quotes. <clears throat> and so every Christmas we text each other, happy Christmas, Harry, happy Christmas, Ron. Mm -hmm. um, That's cool. And we have over the years like we will randomly like quote different Harry Potter quotes to each other. Her bachelorette party that I planned, I took her to um, Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Nice. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, Anna says that you should. <laughs> that would be cute if you worked in your your dog as a like a puppy ghost or something. Oh my god. Is an idea. That's fun. Oh my god, a teddy, a, a little teddy head. I like that. So these are just like three, what is the, what, three three characters? Are these gonna be yeah. like, okay, those heads? Yeah. Cool. But I kind of want them to have this this feel to them where they're very character, caricatured. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to, th figure out if I want to like try to add them as they go up through here. And you're working all on like one one layer, one layer in, in one artboard, which is yeah a neat way to use an artboard, by the way. That's cool. So if you're just joining us, I got Shauna, Shauna Parmesan, as she's known on uh, like the, inst on is it Instagram and uh, yeah, Twitter? Yeah, Instagram and Twitter. 
So you can check out her work. Of course, you can click the info tab as well. And uh, yeah, it's day two of three. So into it. Feel free, get inspired, make your own postcard as well if you want. And it can be a fictitious place, because why not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to do Mordor, you do Mordor. Mordor. How have the Is submissions looked today so far? Because oh. I haven't seen any of them yet. Uh, pretty good. I did not see all of them from the last. some really cool ones. There we are. Inch. I, can, I can share one or two with you. I think we talked about this earlier, but just so you can see it, Shauna. Yeah. Um, this one, this postcard for Houston, Texas. How oh, interesting. <laughs> Which is like, hey, you know what? It's really hot here. Yeah. There's always thunderstorms and construction and ongoing crime so in this area. Basically, <laughs> it just makes me not want to go to and Houston. Then summer. Here's a little bit of summer, like right here, I guess. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's fun. Which I love it. And I love, I just love that that whole contrast. So shout out to Matt. Did a great job. Found um, it. Today's, you know. <laughs> Valga's today's challenge might be an excellent excuse for me to draw Star Wars stuff. Not that I've ever needed an excuse. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Where are you going to find inspiration? Oh, just look around. Look around your place, which yes. is like all Star Wars. Oh, and all the time. My last um, stint on Adobe Live, I did uh, if Harry Potter were a kid's book, like a baby book. Oh, yeah, that's adorable. So right now I'm just kind of blocking in the shapes because I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to stick with this layout. So pro tip, it doesn't hurt to like scrap and start over, which may happen. Mm -hmm. And I like how you're working in uh, like a, a pink, millennial pink. It's my go-to. Pinks like and it. blues. Even um, when I did, um, even when I, I did all my sketches in my sketchbook, I always drew in colored pencil. Hmm. And it just made my stuff look super fun as a result. And you're still working on one layer. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm always amazed with that. <laughs> yeah, in this case, what I'd end up doing is if I want to clean it up, I would set it, set my brush to clear and just kind of mm -hmm. erase stuff as I go. but. More than likely, in this case, I'm going to end up um, just drawing on a new layer when I would decide I do want it to clean up. Um, there is, is the shortcut. I'm going to, uh, maybe you want it, maybe you don't, but there are shortcuts for that sort of thing. Is there? Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out. It's, it's shift option. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll go through the blend modes. I'm just trying to figure out which one is, is clear. Like on a layer blend mode or the brush um, blend mode? The brush. So oh, yeah. uh, right over here, yeah, have this selected. So I'm holding the shift option and then, you know, we can go for H for oh. hard light, color burn. I'm actually just, you know, again, finding, trying to find clear. Where are you clear? Hopefully everybody can see that working. You get the idea. Yeah. But especially because like really you're going to have, just like you're doing, you have your favorite blend modes. Yeah. Like I use, I like overlay and I use soft light a lot. I basically just use those two a lot. Yeah. So, you know, it's helpful to have. You yeah. can also um, shift option O. We'll get you to overlay. Okay. Yeah. 
Because I can, what you can also do is just set your brush to clear and then you create a new brush and it'll capture that. And then you can oh. just switch back and forth between your brushes. That's cool. Which I have done before. Anna really loves your uh, sketch layers. Your compositions are amazing. And Aww, I love thanks. that S. I love, absolutely love combining script and um, sans serif. Mm -hmm. I like it. Anyone that's- Oh wait, that's a good like, question. So, um, Aran is asking, so, and I don't have clear uh, highlighted either in here. I was trying to find it this whole time. Weird, and what brush do you have? Uh, I just, the stand, I just actually just didn't even pick one. That's weird. So. I wonder why. Because uh, I don't think I've ever had that issue. I will figure that out. Yeah, that's weird, because I can't say I've ever had that that issue before with any of mine. I'm sure it has something to do with the brush you have selected, has that as Is, an option in some way, or maybe, are, maybe are it's my your, layer. I was gonna Ooh. say, are all your layers selected? Now try the... Ah, there you go, we figured it out, you are good. Okay. Um, so basically you just make sure you're on um, an actual layer and not like a text layer. So make sure you're on something that you can paint on or draw on and then you'll have clear available. And just so you can see where it is, it's right up here behind and clear will not be there if you uh, are on like a text layer. So have you seen Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse? I haven't and I need to. It yeah. Just the preview looks amazing. Yeah, it is. I know, it's pretty cool. Was it good? Yeah, good, like great story. Visuals are fantastic, you know. Oh it's man. It's really good, really well done, so. I think I might have to do that with my sister next week. Yeah, it's. I think it'll like surprise you in a couple ways, so yeah. I just, I recently moved in, in, in Denver, like moved like downtown, and guess what? I'm like, I'm about maybe, I'm a five minute drive to the largest comic book store, I think in, 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 in it, maybe in the US. What? One of the, like, it's huge. Mile High Comics. I don't know if it's the actual largest, largest, but it's freaking, it's a warehouse of comics, and it's awesome. That's so that's so where cool. I'll go for like inspiration, you know, or just yeah. just for fun, to be honest with you. It's awesome. I go to Barnes and Noble during what would generally be quieter hours so that I can peruse the kids section without kids screaming. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's fun. Bookstores are awesome. Yeah, and then I'll do, um, there's a antique mall, probably, it's like 20 minutes from my parents' house. It's uh, called, Gurney Antique Mall, or Gurney Antique Market, something like that, it's like, it's huge. Mm -hmm. And I'll go there to go find like lettering things. I found a, a type drawer oh, wow. that I hung on my wall. Um, I've found, I actually found three packs of vintage speedball nibs for pen and nib ink, pen and ink nibs. Oh yeah? Yeah, and it's three packs of just full of them. Huh. Each one is a different size, so. I still have yet to actually use them, but they look so cool, and the box is really sweet. That is really cool. So I, when I get back to um, Chicago, my plan is next week to go to um, go to the antique mall and like look at vintage maps, okay, and vintage cookbooks, and see what I can find. That's cool. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That is cool. I think bookstores are, are a good place for inspiration. 
curious as to where people go for inspiration or just for fun, quite frankly. Um, and yeah, so I did have to, first of all, their website's horrible. Mile High Comics is the name of the place. Oh, and they okay. are, they say they're the largest uh, and friendliest comics retailer. Oh, okay. So. That's like that Adidas website we were looking at yeah, last night. Yeah, hor it's horrible. <laughs> like, this is so bad, but hey, it works, right? There. I mean, Are you inspired by looking at that website? Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> Why fix what ain't broke? <laughs> yeah. And on Saturday nights, they do rest. They have wrestling there. What? I don't know if it's fake wrestling or what, but they're like, yeah, man, we're about to do wrestling here. You know, after That's... we close at six, stick around. That is they were setting so up random. the whole. Because it's it's a warehouse, like I said, wrestling in a comic book shop, basically. This, these characters are looking like super fun. I don't know if they're supposed to be spooky, but I'm really into them. I don't think they'd end up looking spooky even if I tried, because <laughs> I just, I can't, I can't draw spooky for some mm -hmm. reason. Plus it's my interpretation of them. Yeah, I like just the different Different shapes of the heads. Um, yeah. are, are they gonna be are they gonna be stone and how would you make them look like stone, I guess is I guess I don't know. Um or do you just like the shapes of the heads? Like I know. like the shapes of the heads like that, but what I'm gonna end up doing is using either like a, a muted or a more muted tone and okay. then use some um, different texture shading to kind of give it a little bit of a grainy look. Okay. But they're gonna be pretty monochromatic style. Uh, color-wise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I love the Surface Pro, by the way. People are asking about, or mentioning Wacom and stuff. And yeah. You know, there's, there's iPad Pros, there's like a thousand, there's a couple different ways to where you can get involved, uh, you know, with drawing digitally. Yeah. You know, and I love that you're just able to work in the actual full version of Photoshop. Somebody asked earlier about when's Photoshop for the iPad coming out. Yeah. And, you know. I'm dying for that to happen. <laughs> which will be cool. Yeah. And that will be good. But right now, you, it's kind of like you, you do already have Photoshop on a tablet, by the way, you know? Yeah, and it makes it really easy when I travel to be able to do work because while I have an iPad Pro and Procreate's a great program, but mm. it doesn't hold up to this. Okay. Like it's it's a lot more limited and I can't I can't do final client work in it. Like I just can't wrap my head around it because I'm so ingrained in Photoshop. Yeah. So So yeah, we don't yeah. have a date for that. Somebody was asking earlier. It could have been in the earlier actually earlier today. There's no date for Photoshop for the iPad. Yeah, I know they they didn't they, I think they demoed it at Max, right? Yeah. I know, like, Twitter was all astir with excitement over it. Uh, Voodoo Val, does she, do you have, like, a ton of comics? I'm kind of curious about that. And on that note, it is time for Chat and Win. Yay! Chat and Win. Welcome back. So, yes, fireworks means it's time to dive into chat and win. Just say something in chat. Tell us your favorite superhero. I think that I would like be it. fun. I like it. Someone asked if I've used the Surface Studio. I actually have. I was hired by Microsoft a couple of years ago to demo it at um, Adobe Summit. And it's a really, really nice piece of equipment. I um, My favorite thing to demo is the fact that you could lift it up and down incredibly easy. Like you could push it down with one finger. Oh, um, but I really liked the scale of it. I really liked the responsiveness of it, and it was overall a really, really good piece of equipment. But it was something that I I didn't need because it's a full computer. No, oh, that's cool. I um, like Captain America. Just throwing it out there. And actually, if you want to go villain, Bucky Barnes, the Winter Soldier. Oh, really? Yeah. Did you like the the movie? Yes. I went as Bucky for Halloween one year. 
you know who uh, is has superhero status is Katie Sturdivant. Woo! -hoo! She has won uh, what a hundred stickers from Sticker Mule. So congratulations. That's exciting. Yes, just double checking on that. Yep. 100 free die cut stickers for you. Congratulations, Katie. We'll contact you. Uh, it really is the fastest, easiest way to, to buy custom stickers, uh, which is awesome. So have fun with that. And uh, really, anyone can uh, get uh, stickers for super cheap. For a buck, you can get 10 custom stickers if you go to this URL. That's a so, deal. There she is, Katie. Awesome. Superhero status. Make some superhero stickers. That would be kind of fun to make a superhero. Like what would the logo be for the superhero? And getting in all that. Yeah. Like, do they have a logo or a calling card or what? Or is that too old school? You, you could know? be sticker man. You leave stickers in your wake. Yeah, you could be sticker man. Oh yeah, it was Superman. Wasn't it Superman had the ability to pull off the S? Wasn't that in one of the movies? Pulled off the S, threw it at a bad guy, and like wrapped him up in this. You're in asking this the wrong virtual... person. <laughs> so it was like I wrapped him up in a big sticker made for my S. It was. Uh, it was a. Um, oh gosh, what's his name? In the '80s, basically. Yeah. One of the movies. I have never seen a Superman cartoon. Right. You haven't seen Superman? No, I'm I'm bad. Christopher Reeve. It was Christopher Reeve. And uh, yeah, there are a couple more. I would really like Disney to, if Disney um, bought DC, mm -hmm. then you can have some fun crossovers with like Superman, you know, like the Avengers and X-Men and stuff like that. Yeah. A lot of crossovers would be kind of fun. Yeah, it's really weird right now because they have, like, Avengers has Scarlet Witch and Silver Silver Surfer? No, 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 no. What was uh, the other one? It has Scarlet Witch. Silver Surfer is one of the yeah. five. It's in, um, well, no, actually, I don't know where Silver Surfer is in that. Who was, um, who was the one in the X-Men? X-Men with the, uh, X-Men Apocalypse, the guy with the silver hair, glasses. Oh, Quicksilver? Was that no, it? Was he? Did he run really fast? Yeah. Yeah, he did a whole montage to with an '80s song in the background. Yeah, that you was know pretty what you cool. Want to talk about? Yeah. So like, I guess in one of the universes, like he and Scarlet Witch are brother sister, but it's a completely different actor in the Disney movies because they have him crossed over in there. Mm. So I guess he's like in Marvel, but also X Men. And really, it was the weirdest huh. thing. But he shows up in like both universes, and yeah, curious uh, if if we're onto something correct. Looks like uh, Lance says it is Quicksilver. Was Quicksilver in uh, Avengers, an Avengers movie, and was he also in uh, X Men? Yeah, I guess that's the question. So the Avengers movie that he was in was the one where they first introduced Scarlet Witch, and they also have him, and they're mm -hmm. they both that's have Russian right. accents. It's, he's like his name is like Peter or something. Yeah. And he dies, and spoiler, um, <laughs> but he's still alive in the DC X Men oh, comics okay. universe. Fascinating. In X Men, uh, they have him as Magneto's son. Yeah. Huh. I feel I don't know if they're like taking liberties or if that's a canon. Oh, uh, uh, they were supposed to be uh, Magneto's children, both of them? Huh, I don't know. Interesting. It's fascinating. But that's what's fun about comics. Like, I guess if you read read the comics, comics can be freaking crazy, mm -hmm. you know? They're, they can do a lot. Um, you know, it's just pretty amazing, just the different, you know, approaches that they have to, you know, do these different storylines. Yeah. No, anytime I, I watch those movies and something crosses over like that, I end up Googling. So I'm just like, what the heck? This makes yeah. no sense. Uh -huh. And I want to understand. Wheela, yeah, yeah. my um, my parents, who I think are 
possibly watching this. My dad loves the Iron Man movies. Mm-hmm. And they've been playing those on on uh, TV a lot lately. And I'm not sure why. It just happens that like the last several times I've gone upstairs, Iron Man's been on TV. Nice. Into it. Those are those are good movies. Mm-hmm. Man, that they did they did it right. Man, they they, they did pretty well. They definitely got the perfect person to do Iron Man. Yeah. And when does the new Avengers come out? Because I know that there's another Avengers movie. <laughs> uh, but I don't know if it's like if they've finished filming or if there's I, a release date or anything. I know there's a new Spider-Man coming out. Mm-hmm. Like Spider-Man Far From Home or something ah, like that. Ah, Endgame, that's what it's called. Avengers yeah, Spider- Endgame? Yeah, Avengers Endgame, I don't know, probably. I think actually, yes, the Far From Home comes out and then Avengers comes out after that. They're gonna need to like attack, attack more franchises because they're gonna run out of movies suddenly. Well, and they are talking about like sort of if we as a culture will run into like a superhero fatigue after a while. Yeah. You know, which could happen. Couldn't, it could. I don't, maybe, who knows? Like, yeah. A good movie is a good movie, you know? I don't know what to say. Right now, though, they have to finish the Avengers movies because they're in too deep. Yeah. The last one I'm looking, looking forward to. No, I, I, I personally, I don't want them to end. I want them to keep making them, th- like, keep making the Avengers movies. The, uh, the theme Owen song. needs more Ghost Rider. Yeah. The theme song of For Avengers, it just, every time it just gets me, it's so good. For Avengers? Yeah. The dun 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 dun, that one. Oh, I don't, yeah. I didn't know there was a theme song. Yeah, the Avengers have their own theme song. (laughs) Really? That's when you know you made it. You have your own theme song in logo. Yeah. (laughs) There's like a French horn that comes in. It just sounds so good. So there's a Spawn movie coming out as well. Spider, oh, thank you, Chad. Spider-Man Far From Home, uh, Captain Marvel uh, as well. Yeah. Avengers Endgame, thank you. That's cool. And if you are just joining us, we have Shauna, Lynn, Panchezin. Am I saying your last name right? Pan- you sure Panch- are. Panches- oh, wow. wow, that's great. So again, uh, based on this, I, I'm, I'm loving this postcard, basically. Um, yeah, this is where we're at. And if I turn off, I love I love how it looks with those two colors. Even you know, like that. Oh yeah, that's why I sketch in color because it just makes the sketches look so much more engaging and fun. Uh, Valerian, oh, like. Yeah, Juju is talking about the Valerian movie, which yeah didn't do too well here in the U.S. I, I liked it. I didn't hear about that one. What's this? Yeah, Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets. I really like that actor who played him. Don't uh, I can't remember his name. I think he's he hasn't been in great movies, but he's a great actor. Uh, so yeah. I like the Deadpool movies. I finally saw those. Yeah. They have a, there's a new one that came out. Oh, is it that Once Upon a Deadpool? Once Upon a Deadpool. Is, so is that like an actual movie or is that a, like, cause I saw it pop up yeah, in my, in my thing, but I didn't know. I w- I'm gonna watch it. I haven't yet. So but. it wasn't like an in theaters thing, right? Uh, yeah, I don't think it hit theaters. Did it? I don't know. Because I saw Deadpool 2 and then I saw the first Deadpool because I didn't watch the first one prior to the second one. And um, and then all of a sudden I saw the the Once Upon a Deadpool and I'm like, yeah. did I miss Did I miss one? There were rumors about that coming out. And I, the thing is, I don't know if it came out, uh, you know, around Christmas time or not, but it seemed like it, it, it definitely didn't hit theaters big. If It, it might have went directly to um, digital or whatever, to TV or whatever. Um, Ashy wants you to do a book. Your style is really good. Oh, thank you. I have a like kid book in process that I have to eventually pitch. Uh, Esther is wondering if you ever use Illustrator. Nope. She's like, no way. Get that away from me. It's all Photoshop all the time. I use it every now and then I'll have to use it. Um, 
I do, uh, if I have a client that needs lettering that's gonna be scaled up really large, I will go in and I'll draw uh, my lettering fairly large so that when I go in, I have some settings that I put together so that if I just do a live trace, mm -hmm. it keeps that look. Oh, okay. But nice. a lot of that too is why I use that this pe the pencil tool here because it can't, it'll have just like this nice little mm -hmm. pixeled edge so there's none of this yeah. like fading texture. It's either texture. on or off. There's no uh, yeah. aliasing in that. Exactly. Uh, how did you, how'd you find your art style? A lot of trial and error and a lot of drawing. It's evolved a lot actually over time because on my Twitter, I posted a link recently because I found art that I submitted to Calm Arts back in 2013, or well, 2014, but it was art from 2013. And it's it's come really far since. And I think your what you created yesterday was a good example of like your style. I, I wouldn't, personally, I wouldn't sweat, you know, finding a style or whatever, because yeah. you, you just kind of said, here's a stamp, I'm just gonna like recreate it however I want to. Yeah. And yourself naturally, it kind of comes out of that, so. Yeah, like my biggest tip, when I, especially when it comes to like lettering, is if you're trying to kind of, you know, learn how to draw the letters, learn how to kind of feel them out, but then when you get comfortable, instead of doing this and then trying to add stuff on, mm -hmm. do it like a contour line drawing. and just draw outlines. And that's gonna show some personality because it won't be perfect. Hmm. Yeah, that is cool. And then from there you can add in like little details and things. Very cool. Oh, that's, that's looking cool. <laughs> uh, Juju must be French, you must be French, I take it. Uh, if Michael Shays was here, he would be able to relate to all your references, asterisks and all those different characters. Seems like you uh, know a lot, so that's cool. And Kyle Webster knows a lot about, I, I don't, well, he's lived overseas. Has he? Yeah. So I think he He strikes me know. as someone that would like live in England. Yeah, I can't remember where it was overseas, but. Kevin Lee, what's up, buddy? Good to have you here. He's been on the stream with us. He's complimenting you on your Z. Thank you. And people were saying like, hey, you're doing a great job drawing those straight lines. They're like, my lines are not that straight. Thanks. So, I will say, if you want to make straight lines, you, the smoothing is nice. Yeah, which like, I don't have it activated on this one, but I could turn it on. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to do it super exaggerated yeah, so can it's you just, clear. Yeah, show them so they... See how there's a lag? That lag makes it so if you, yeah. you know, jerk your hand, it's, you st still can correct it. And if I take it off zero and I try to do this sort of line again, you'll see that it's it's not quite as smooth. Yeah. Whereas here you get these really nice curves. This one's a little more janky. But still, like you, you're pretty good. <laughs> I can see well, how it's you using, don't like if you use just like your wrist to make it happen, it's a lot harder. Whereas if you use your whole arm. Mm. That's a good tip. Into it. So yes, the rest of us can use smoothing. You're pretty good. I um, do use smoothing when I have to do when I have to do cursive. Okay. Um, if I'm not doing it like crazy stuff, like I can do. It yeah. just helps kind of keep everything really clean. Oh, I love it. This is where you get us all jealous. Like that's super nice. Am I am am I one of the characters? Paco's another character, and you're like the, one of them too. I'm the ghost. Oh, you're the ghost. I want to be one of those heads there. So look at that. So it just makes it like if you have to do cursive and stuff, the smoothing tool makes it super easy. Uh, we mentioned. Gemini, Project Gemini is just something we're working on internally. We showed that at Adobe Max. And guess what? There's actually smoothing in it. I don't know if they showed that last 
last year, but there's smoothing for this drawing app, which is nice. Nice. So one thing I'm doing here is I'm just kind of, I'm connecting the blush with the ear line. Yep. So it lines up and gives it, um, you just play with the shape a bit. Uh, Clarence, is, is it hard to find a team that makes comic books? I have no idea. I, I, I yeah. assume, you know, just like any industry, if they're talented, they're probably in demand. But I'm yeah. sure for a lot of it's also like a labor of love. You know? Yeah, I would say, I mean, if you look at like publishers, like the comic book publishers, I don't know if they necessarily do them in house, but they probably, they probably outsource. I know people will get hired to do covers for comic books. Yeah. So you just have to kind of like look at the, look at who the publishers are. Yeah. It's just amazing when I go into that uh, Mile High Comics, just the amount of art that's in really just even one comic. You yeah. Know, it's just like so much art. It's and intense. then you go into a warehouse full of it, you're like amazed at the talent out there, you know? Anna really likes your brush. So the brushes, um, you're currently using just, which brush are you using right now actually? What's it called? Uh, the hard lead one. It is the hard lead? Yeah. Okay, cool. I um, yeah, you got, I gave a, a link earlier, so we can always put that in the in the chat if you want. Um, this is the oh, number two go. pencil Perfect. one. Perfect. Yeah, I'll drop that in. Free brushes, courtesy of me for you. Ooh. Uh, Fesla is a, as she is saying, it's a font that is similar to your writing. Oh, Check interesting. Check that out. Yeah, look at that. Let's see. Yeah, time. Time plus talent. Let's check out this. So speaking of fonts, another thing that you know made waves at Adobe Max was the fast that, fact that you could sync all fonts from Typekit if you care to. I love it. Because usually you can only do like a hundred. Yeah. So I was always uninstalling, you know, and stuff like that. Same. Now you can do all of them. You know. I love. I absolutely love Typekit. It yes. makes my life so easy. Hello, Josephina. Welcome. Good to have you here. The nice and thing with, oh. Shauna's using just Photoshop, Photoshop CS 2019. Nine. Yeah. Not Photoshop Express. But to your point, because what you did is, did you customize that sidebar? I did, right. yeah. So that's why it might look a little bit different. Yeah, you can go up to the little There's, three dots, you go to edit toolbar, and you can pull things over, reorganize. It's great. Um, the nice thing too is like, a fun way to mess with people too. If you go on their Photoshop and you oh, just like yeah. hide one tool. <laughs> oh, I'm not a good coworker. <laughs> yeah, you can save your toolbar too, so you can open it and set it up on other computers just by loading it, which is nice. Okay, what is it? I will say that the nice thing with Typekit is even if you do just the single Photoshop subscription, the photography plan, you get Typekit with it. Yeah, which is awesome. It's like, like all the fonts. Uh, and why don't, I'm sorry, I shouldn't even be calling it Typekit, that's wrong. It's not, it's, it's Adobe Fonts. Is it Adobe Fonts now? Yeah. So if you go to fonts.adobe.com. Fonts, formerly the font book, nor, formerly uh, known as Typekit. Typekit, exactly. Which is funny, I mean, there are still are, I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's Adobe, it's fonts.adobe.com, which is good. It's cool too, because they do like these little custom uh, setups of them. So you can see like groupings oh, for yeah. different the styles. Yeah, the font packs. Yeah, that yeah. thing. I found that recently. I was like, this is the coolest thing ever because yeah. it's already paired for me. Right? I mean, and that's a that's a popular question we get. It's like, how do you pair fonts? 
So fonts.adobe.com, font packs, just so you know, just FYI. And then this is exactly what we're talking about. So if you do are gonna have a holiday party or whatever, here's all the fonts. And sometimes they come with, so I can activate all the fonts and sometimes they come with um, demo files as well. Like nice. you might get an InDesign file with it. Just kind of depends. <laughs> Thank you, Val, for posting that. Siobhan, good to have you here. Ah, yes. So uh, Siobhan says that she gets lost with all of Kyle's brushes. Oh, really? Which I, I agree. I'm glad There's we can kind of organize those. And I loved your idea yesterday about favoriting. Like, yeah. I really would love, yeah, I would really love if there was like an option to kind of star your favorite ones. So they all kind of just boop up to the top. Yeah. Into it. Don't forget about the challenge uh, submission deadline. This is our last segment, so pretty much your last time to get uh, get your own postcard in. Yeah, what cities are you guys doing if you're doing the challenge? Or fake cities? I'm kind of digging fake cities. There's no rules, it's your world. You do like Gotham City. Come to Gotham. And I love the idea of just like, you know, making it seem like, you know, a, a, like an anti-postcard postcard. postcard. Like don't yeah. like what we saw for Houston. Don't come here. It's not really that great. We don't have beautiful weather. We don't want you to move here. That sort of thing. Yeah. It's kind of fun. This this is looking good. Thanks. All right. Yeah, and Eric's doing Oslo. Fantastic. Oslo, that's Norway, right? Uh, yes. We got Paul Weaver from Pool Dorset, England. Grand Rapids, Michigan in the house. Adelphi, Maryland. Very cool. You know what, now that I see this, I kind of just want to drop this down and not do that come visit the Haunted Mansion thing. Yeah, I like, I like this. Yeah, I kind of like it like that. I just got to figure out something here because I didn't, the, the ghost is going to be a little too hard to fit in this, so maybe like a little bat or something. Yeah, I wonder what, uh... I feel like I need to get some, like, overgrown brush happening here, though. Because, like, if you... Woo. Because um, if you look at these guys, they're, like, surrounded by, by plants and things. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking about. Something vertical there. Uh, in that space off to the side. It could be, like, a pillar or something. That might not be a bad idea. Give it something that comes through here. Yeah, that would give it some depth. Yeah. We could throw another head up here. How about particles? Uh, Savik uh, really is complimenting you on your work. So it's yes, it's pretty simple. Like you're you're not you're not doing anything crazy fancy. Like no. we've had Jesus Ramirez, you know, we've had Nathaniel Dodson showing us all these fancy tricks. You're like one layer, a brush, and look at how look at how cool this is. So that's what Savik is basically saying. Simple brush, you just put work into it. Come out with something cool. And cute, like a little bat. Little bat. <laughs> I love it. And I'm probably gonna do one more pass with this. As far as tracing, kind of just figure out the main stuff and then the details will I'll keep kind of hidden in the background here. But I want to add just a little more flair to the letters themselves. Oh, you know what would also be good? Hmm. No, I mean, I guess you don't need it, but like a spider web would be, is a, uh, I'm just thinking of design elements. But I like those little, 
little stars. Maybe like something like here. Oh yeah, look at that. That's cool. Yeah, maybe that instead of the vines would work actually in here too. Um, I'm curious about like color after a while, which would be interesting. Yeah, this is, I'm probably gonna continue this too into uh, tomorrow. So if we oh, don't yeah. hit color today, we'll we'll definitely do that tomorrow. And see, this is, and I'll, I can ask some others about this, but I love in Illustrator how you have um, a recolor artwork um, as an option. Yeah. Because sometimes you just want, like you might put down a couple different colors, but you just want to play and like kind of maybe be surprised by different colors. Yeah. So it allows you to kind of like just pick different whole palettes and I'll change the whole color of the thing. Yeah, I you wish, know. does Photoshop doesn't have something like that, does it? Um, if it has LUTs, I think is the closest thing to it. Mm -hmm. Lookup tables, um, which are essentially a lot of adjustment layers rolled into one little asset. So, oh, okay. Uh, do they work for Adobe? Well, Shauna does this week, I guess. Yeah, I guess technically this week I'm contracting. Yeah, I'm an Adobe employee, and uh, yeah, a sleepy spider. I love the idea of it. Did you draw a spider? Like a spider would be. That's a great element too. Good call. Um, and now, great idea. So, yeah. Uh, these tracks are being mixed fresh by uh, DJ Pac-Man, if you're curious about the music playing in the background. He's on the, on the ones and twos over there, <laughs> as they say, I guess. <laughs> there was some nice jazz music playing on the earlier stream. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what's playing right now, actually. I just kind of... <laughs> smooth, smooth. I don't know if he's on the ones and twos. Maybe he's... Is, this is c music composed by DJ Pac-Man. It's like the, the smooth sounds of DJ Pac-Man. Taking you into the, the evening hours. DJ Pac-Man. And Shauna. Shauna Lynn. I like calling you Shauna Lynn. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of fun. But this is this is nice. I can see how little music, just watching you create. This is kind of. Do you think it's kind of therapeutic for you? Yeah. You, you know. Like, yeah, I like watching. Like I'll watch Skillshare classes and stuff just to watch people's process. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's why. Like I really liked when I would watch a lot of Twitch streams. Um, those would, especially when it, when Adobe was still on Twitch, I'd I'd pop into different ones and just watch people work for hours. That's cool. And it was fun because things like this make you kind of feel like you're working with somebody. Yeah. So you're not 100% alone. Yeah. Into it. And you also learn. Exactly. You come out of Whoa, this. Whoa, Savik, where are you, uh, where do you live? Basically, it's 3.28 a.m. Holy where smokes. Where Savik started watching this at midnight. Um, we did start at 9 a.m. this morning, so maybe that's better timing for you. <laughs> but wow. We try to hit most of the world as, as much as possible. Um, honestly, like if we went into the night, if we went late, we kind of lose people because we're kind of just broadcasting into the, into the uh, Pacific Ocean, if you will, more yeah. than and, and those islands, you know, after a while. It's really cool though because we really do get people from all over that mm. tune in. Yeah. Oh, Savik is in India. That's right. Um, there, uh, I don't know if it was a web page, but there was a website. No, you know who it was? It was uh, Ze Frank. This guy is Z Frank. Do you know oh, Z Frank? I know um, that Z name, yeah. Isn't Z that the, the one with the Z monkey? Frank. He, he or, made a bunch of just random yeah. fun little things, and he did Earth yeah. Sandwich. So it's like, you, you, you do this at the same time. You could find out co the exact opposite coordinates of where we're at like right now. Really? And there's a website that'll do it, but his was like, make an earth sandwich. So you put a piece of bread on the ground and so do they. <laughs> and you make an earth sandwich. It's so dumb, but it's hilarious. That's fantastic. 
But I think, I don't know, actually, I would like to find out. I know in Denver, Colorado, it would put me in the Indian Ocean. Really? Much. That's where, yeah, that's, uh, I'm getting off track. Why am I talking about this stuff? Because it's interesting. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, just just concerned. I don't, you know, I want I want everybody to be well rested too. So Vic, I want you to be well rested, my friend. I'm so happy you're here. We'll use our inside voices. We'll be quiet. We know people are probably sleeping there, so. Yeah, good luck. Good luck eating that sandwich. But yes. So I just made an open face club sandwich, earth open face earth sandwich. Yeah. Since I didn't have anybody to put a piece of bread on the other in the ocean, because that would be for the fishies. Yeah, I'd be really worried if a fish was like, "Hey, here's some bread." I know. <laughs> here's some. Yes. Okay, so, um, what are you doing now? If you don't mind me asking. Because didn't you already outline this? I did. I'm doing a little bit of tweaking and adding some flair to the letters. Okay, gotcha. Because um, this is your third layer of like color, basically, right? Yeah. You still have the, the pink layer. I do, yeah. So it's basically just I'm adding some little elements to them to kind of give them a little bit of extra basicness. Like hashtag basic, not they're not basic letters, but mm -hmm. like hashtag basic. Okay. Oh, okay, that's fun. Yeah, I just you're in a little bit of like some slight, some slight curves, and I don't know, just kind of playing around. Yeah. Yeah, it's just I mean it's very minimal stuff that I'm changing now, but. It's just to give it a little bit more flair. Into it. And some of them won't change because I like how they already look. Or there's not enough room to kind of fit something different. Mm -hmm. I uh, cannot read your name there with that last uh, post. It needs to learn Photoshop but free of charge. I would say this is part of learning Photoshop free of charge. Also, click the not now, do it later, do it in an hour or <laughs> so. Um, click the replays tab yeah. and uh, yeah, watch all that free training. Well, and if you want to learn it free of charge, you could do the trial. How long is the trial now? That is a good question. It should be 30 days. Okay. But I'm not 100% sure. But that's a good way to like test it out and see if you like it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Dana agrees. She likes the redraw process. Fun to watch and like watch the cleanup and improvements from like layer to layer. And yeah. again, very therapeutic too, I think. Just kind of watching you do this is. Yeah, uh, what would you do if you were being watched 24-7? What if we were live streaming 24-7? What if your life was being live streamed constantly? What, like People the Truman would, Show? Yeah. Uh, but you were on, like you knew you were being broadcast. People would realize how boring, I know for me they'd realize how boring my life is and, and how many naps I take. They, they'd realize how often I just talk to my dog. Oh yeah, That's we cool. have we have full, very intense conversations. When you do stream, do you find like, and I know like so, you know, Voodoo Val streams, and mm -hmm. when you do stream, do you do you find like it does actually help you work when it's, you're live streaming? Yeah, I call it forced concentration. Yeah. Because otherwise, I will go on Facebook, I'll go on Twitter, mm -hmm. I'll check Instagram, I'll talk to my dog. <laughs> Whereas, like, if I'm streaming. It forces me to actually focus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't you can't like click over to your Facebook page or something. And yeah, everybody will see it. Exactly. Uh, 
All right, you're you're losing me again, Juju. <laughs> I do not know what you're talking about. Your essential news, uh, Grand Grand Prix, but I appreciate, you know. You. 4 a.m. Holy smokes, Dana! On my flight over here, I was on a United flight, and they added Bob Ross to their free United Wi-Fi entertainment. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. What a great idea. I was like, you know, I didn't know what's up. Very cool. I was at a, um, we had this creative jam last week and after, after we went to the after party, which was like at a bar and they were playing that on, uh, at a bar. So really? It's amazing where, yeah. That's so cool. Which was totally appropriate because we had a bunch of designers and we're like, hey, it's Bob Ross. It was like the perfect place to go. What was the creative jam theme? Because that's my favorite part of the jams. Um, it was uh, choose your own adventure. That was the, oh, that's a the good theme. one. Yeah. So you had a in this case last week it was all about creating an, an app or you know some sort of interactive experience. You know, okay. A UX experience. Was it an XD one? Yeah, XD. So, so it was fun. I judged one and I wish I could remember what the theme was for the one that I judged. Can't remember what it was. I think it was like to places never been before or something random. Okay, where was um, it? That one was in Orlando, and Orlando. then I spoke at another one in Orlando, and our theme that for that one was Florida Man. Florida Man. Florida Man. And um, we had to explain to Liz like what Florida Man was, because she goes, are people gonna get that? And we're like, oh, people will get that. Um, I don't know if I get it. So any, with Florida, like any, a lot of the um, arrest records are public. Oh. So anytime you, anytime those arrest record, you know, something really interesting, the news will run with it. So a lot mm -hmm. of times you'll see news, news uh, articles that it's like, Florida man wrestles crocodile and oh, wins. Oh, that's funny. Well, I definitely am aware of the Florida like headlines. Yeah, that's what Florida Man is. Are those that's headlines? That's funny. Okay, that's because good. it's it's always Florida Man. So everyone jokes like, man, Florida Man's been up to a lot lately. <laughs> I love it. So that's like, a good one. And it was a, um, <laughs> I think it was like a mixed challenge. So it was like different. Um, they didn't have to do an app or anything. It was just whatever they were strongest in. Mm -hmm. So one person did a Florida Man dating app. Another person did a Florida Man challenge app. Okay. Um, someone else did a, I think, a Florida Man video. Oh, wow. I mean, it was it was really a well done challenge. That's awesome. I'm pretty sure the room was just laughing almost the entire time. <laughs> that's a that is a that's a fun theme. And, yeah. and it's OK to joke like if you're from you could only do that in Florida. What's that? how perfect is that? That's awesome. Yeah, I don't think you could. Yeah, you could not have done that challenge anywhere else, but it happened to work really well in Florida. Mm -hmm. And like and Florida man has his own Reddit. That's the best part. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, she's using a Surface Pro Surface Pro 4. Mm -hmm. I think we kind of decided. Yep, Surface Pro 4. Um, you could do a lot of this, so I, I think it's interesting, like, you could use a mouse to, to do what you're doing. Yeah, the, you know, a lot of the curves are really tough with a mouse, but the thing is you're not using any pen pressure to change the brush at all, right? Not, uh, well, I kind of am. It's just not as apparent now because of the oh, racing okay. stuff, but when I, like, when I draw, it won't be as obvious that I have different pen pressure going on. But I do make use of the pen pressure because if I were okay. to just do this, um, like if I were to just bump it up to the maximum diameter, there'd be it would just get rid of everything in one fell swoop. There'd be no ability to change the pressure at which I get rid of stuff. If that makes sense. Whereas, like if I need to just get rid of like this little corner, mm -hmm. I can use the pressure to get rid of just that spot versus okay. like the whole thing. Okay, cool. I hope that made sense. Yeah, uh, yeah it does. And I think. Uh, uh, but I did learn to draw in Photoshop using a mouse. Yeah. Way, That's way, a... way long ago. It was like almost 20 years ago. 
How do you change the direction of your brush? Is all, it's pin tilt, is that how you're? Um, I don't have tilt on here. Um, I don't think the Surface Pro is tilt function. Okay. The, but mine, I have it set to the, mine is um, under angle jitter. That's what changes, like anytime I make a stroke, you'll see the little cursor changes direction. And that's from the angle jitter. Okay. And it's just basically like a, a, a random? Yeah, like if, if I were to, let me put this on normal. If I were to change the angle jitter to <sighs> direction, I think it's, okay, that one's, that one. You're, I'm noticing a pattern there actually. Yeah, okay, so let me see if I turn this. Okay, so no jitter on. I'm trying to explain this because I think that that the direction and stuff only works if you have a tilt okay. ability. Gotcha. I mean, it definitely makes it like change it back. I, yeah. Change the jitter. Yeah. You got it fixed. Cool. Because you can kind of notice when it, you did initial direction, it was the same brush. Mm -hmm. Like you could tell a pattern's developing. Uh, so yeah, I think everybody starts to, they do start drawing with their mouse initially. It's kind of, yeah. when you go digitally, it's kind of like you kind of start somewhere with like a mouse and then you realize, you know, especially doing circles, like if you're to do this, that O, it's kind of tough with a mouse. Yeah, when I, when I started out, I, didn't have a Wacom tablet. I used the, uh, I used a mouse. But I remembered. I distinctly remember like my first introduction to a Wacom tablet was the Campbell's Soup at Hand commercial, because it was a woman drinking her soup and drawing with this, um, with the with the Wacom tablets. She was drawing down here, looking at her screen, drinking her soup. Mm. But really, that's it's interesting because I, I was, you know, we're talking about you know, using tablets and pens and stuff. I know really talented artists that just use their mouse too. Oh yeah, I envy those people. Yeah, I'm trying to think of, we've, we've had them on the stream before as well. Uh, Julie. I wish I could remember, because I feel like I remember the stream you're talking about and I have no idea who it was. Yeah, we had, it was the same time we had Julia Zoavo on. Um, she definitely uses, um, I don't think she used a pen or anything like that, but you could pretty much tell all of her work is pretty like angular. Um, so it kind of depends on what you're making, I guess, right? Yeah. As I switch over to her work, you just like a difference in this style, for instance. Oh yeah. Very, very much, you know. Very, very different. Sort of illustrator, this is a circle. Yeah, it's yeah. very, very clean. Yeah, super clean, really, really fun. Oh yeah, so uh, uh, Val's wondering if you could zoom out and so we could see the whole piece, if you don't mind. This is where we're at now. Let me bump Grim this grinning up. ghosts come out to socialize. That's where we're at right now. And I'm just doing one last cleanup before I start inking. It sounds like the market, uh, Mr. Alam, is kind of tough in India for, for designers, I guess, for graphic designers. This is your, this is like a monster or a ghost? Ghost. Or just, okay, cool. <laughs> it is a Mickey ghost. <laughs> it's a Mickey ghost, that's what I was wondering. Inspired awesome. by this little one right up here. Oh, wow, that's cool. Love it.
What should we all talk about? I feel like I should be explaining more, but I'm just drawing <laughs> things right now, so. Uh, yeah, how did you find your drawing style? We kind of, you, and where did you leave it when you found it? Were you like, was it under the bed or like, where, how did you discover your style? It was like, oh, there's my style. I it was it, there all it, along. I found it on the sidewalk. <laughs> it was calling my name. It was like a shiny penny on the ground. No. Oh, um, yeah. I like that. It was a lot of um, practice and, and trial and error. And so I would do things like, I'll pull up yesterday's thing. Um, I'd do stuff like, like this where I would do studies of things that already existed, just kind of loosely figure out how I would interpret it and go from there. And that's a, that's a great way. I think we, um, we don't value just like honestly, like literally taking something and copying it. Yeah. Like we think, oh, you should, and you shouldn't steal at all. But like, right. if you take any element, anybody's work, be like, how did how did she make that? Just try to recreate it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's like huge. I learned. I had to. I used to have the hardest time with color, and so what I did was I, and I loved how um, Joey Chu tackles color. So I ended up looking up looking at his pieces and I would try to recreate elements of it just to see if I could understand how he made certain effects happen. Mm. And I don't use any of those effects in my work, but it was a great way for me to learn to kind of work with color and understand how how everything interacted with its, with each other and kind of figure out how he determined his palettes and it would look like he had like 10 different colors, but he was using only three, things like that. Wow. I think it's interesting when you do start like, you know, taking somebody's work and like recreating it. You you kind of like realize how hard it can be. Yeah. You know, I I, I think there's so much more. Like you're even illustrating like you're making this look easy. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, when somebody just starting out, I mean, it takes takes you a little while to get to this point, right? It does, yeah. And I mean, it's like that. Like we were saying yesterday. It looks like you only did that logo in five minutes. No, it took me 20 years. Yeah. You know, it may, it, you know, it took me 20 years to look like it, to make it look like it took five minutes or whatever. And in this case, you know, it, it's, I've been drawing since I could hold a pencil, but I've been illustrating professionally for only about six ish years full time. And it's taken me those six years to get to this point where it things just work. Yeah, and yeah. But it was purposeful practice, mm -hmm. you know. Is it fun going back and seeing some of your earlier work and just like seeing how you've evolved? As... Yeah, it is, and, it, and part of it is looking at it too and just going, oh God, I thought that was good back then. Yeah, you're like, I remember when I made this, and then you look at it again, you're like, this is so, this has issues. <laughs> yeah. Which is really good, because if it's if you think it's awesome, like, are you even growing, you know? Yeah, like you can be proud of it, but I always know that like in the work I do, there's always room for improvement. And so it's kind of fun seeing some of the older stuff you know, pop up. It's really weird when I'm on Pinterest and Pinterest recommends my old stuff to me. Yeah, oh, that's funny. I've had uh, that happen a lot. Huh. And I'm like, it's like, we think you'll like this and it's my my own stuff. And I'm like, of course I like it, it's my stuff. Um, but like, even on my Behance, I have some of my older stuff on there still. And so it's very clear in that, in it, just looking through the gallery that there's a progression that's happened. Mm -hmm. That's the big thing, just like a little bit every day. Yeah. Try something new a little bit every day. My Instagram too, like if you scroll back, you can kind of see how my work has continuously evolved over the years. And that's almost a, a more accurate representation of how I've you know, adapted my style over the years and how I've changed it and how it's it's gone and, and um, evolved as, as I've grown. Yeah, into it. Claude says this, the smile's so cute. Good to have you here, Claude. What's up, buddy? Wait, is that Claude? Claude? 
Claude's probably yeah. Uh, Hi. Probably, uh, he might be like right on the other side of that wall. Knock if you're here. Yeah. And thanks. And I like. In, in this day and age, sorry, but is uh, you know you could anybody can go back and look at your earlier. Like we're in the oh, yeah. digital age where things are documented. Once it's on the internet, it's there forever. <laughs> Which is fascinating. Fantastic. There you are. Mm -hmm. Shauna Parmesan on Twitter and Instagram. Um, very into it. So I'm not gonna draw the columns in yet because I want them to, um, I don't want it to distract from what I'm gonna be inking. So I'll add those guys in last because I'm not. I don't know if I'm gonna put a face on him or not, or if he's just gonna kind of be a background element. But with that said, yeah, because yeah, the coloring is really gonna matter. Um, it has it has pretty good balance, but yeah, the, the coloring tomorrow will be interesting. Yeah. But how much? How are we doing on time right now? Uh, seven minutes until the challenge submission deadline. Okay. I'm gonna show you guys kind of why I gave you the inker, and then I'm gonna go and do this um, inking in a slightly, with a different brush that I have on my computer. But basically this one, if you outline, you hit the paint bucket and you can fill it and you have no aliasing. Love that. So. I gave that to you guys to use. And then I'm gonna use my, I have a pencil inker that I've done that I use to fill in. Yeah, that's very cool. Um, that's gonna help out so much when it comes to coloring. Mm -hmm. you're, you're not gonna have any of that weird aliasing. Yeah, with this though, because I, I've kind of played with different things and I really like how it looks when you just fill it in. So mm -hmm. there is not like a perfect, it's not perfectly filled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of fun. Have you ever used, cause you could, you could obviously smooth this out if you wanted a smoother look, you could, like you mentioned, you know, sort of like outlining it in, in Illustrator, or mm -hmm. I think it'd be interesting for your work to um, like capture it using Adobe Capture, because Capture oh, makes yeah. it really smooth, and how that would, would change it would just be kind of interesting. And that would be a great way to figure out, it would be fun to see the closest font you draw in. Because you could try to capture the, uh, some text, and it'll, it'll, it'll yeah. try to guess like what font it is. Should we try that with so my handwriting? Should we play with that? Yeah, well, I think I can jump out here to your Instagram. Okay. By the way, I was, just, I was gonna try to find some sample text that I can yeah. grab and then see what font comes up. Yeah, okay, and, I like uh, it. Just for kicks. Might might be able to do that. I'll, yeah. just, I'll just tell people we don't have to. The 10 pounds of everything is mine might be a good one because it's on the white background. Sweet, you got it. That's what my mom refers to our Yorkie as. 10 pounds of everything is mine. 10 pounds of everything is mine. Yeah, he's a grumpy little elf. And um, he gets angry at the other dogs that if he, if anyone happens to like enter the room and take his toy, he gets all grumpy. Oh, really? Yeah, so we, we just say he's, he's everything is mine. He comes in, we call him, every now and then we call him Me Too, because if one of the dogs gets a toy or a treat or something, he'll run into the room and it's like, Me Too, Me Too, Me Too, Me Too. Mm. How many dogs do you have? Four. Three minis and a big golden, who may or may not be watching the stream. I got a picture from my mom yesterday and she was watching me. Nice. We've got a Shih Tzu, two Yorkies, and a golden retriever. Nice. All right. 
right. So uh, less than five minutes, get your entries in. I'll be taking a look at those shortly. Uh, just go to the challenge tab and you will see it. It has your last chance and I wanna see them. Where's that text that you're saying? Like, what oh, the 10 pounds of everything is mine? Yeah. Scroll down, down, boop, boop, up. Nope, down, sorry. Down, there. Okay, very cool. And this is, uh, again, just, just great, great work. I love the coloring of this too. This is really fun, how you kind of yeah. stay with the same tone, but just kind of mixed it up from letter to letter. It's very cool. Yeah, the, the fun thing with my Instagram, you'll, you will see that there's a lot of like, a lot of pink in it, because I just like using pink. And there's no reason beyond, it, beyond I just like it. So if I come out from, if I zoom out a bit, you'll see like, because I don't have these perfectly filled, it kind of gives it a little bit of a grittier mm -hmm. feel. I love it. That's very cool. <laughs> How do I communicate with you, Voodoo Val? You communicate mm -hmm. using the force. <laughs> If you need a higher res image to um, the zoom in of it is probably, oh, you managed to get that word in. Perfect. Yeah, let's see it do its magic. Oh, so yeah. basically you use Adobe Capture to do various things, capture pretty much anything. It's like back in the day we used to have, there was probably, there was a couple apps. Yeah. We rolled them all into Capture, you can capture colors. What was that, Type. what the font? Uh, that's one for in the browser. They might yeah. have a, they might have, and it wasn't, that wasn't one of ours. No, that was one though that I remember using in, in college all the time. Yeah. I use it on my right. uh, desktop. Yeah, but Capture works so well. Yeah, it's still, I don't even know, I'm not sure on the network for my phone what the situation is. So. It's funny how you get it into like a certain palette, like Anna, Davis Quartz, she's into or addicted to minty colors. Yeah, I mean, awesome. hers goes like minty, but also earthy. <laughs> Adobe Cooler, yes. What is it now, color.adobe.com? Yeah, you got it. Yeah, Cooler was, was super fun. Still is. Because now with Adobe Color, you can take a photo of something and pull colors straight from it. When I moved to Chicago, we were, my mom and I were driving up through, um, I think we were in Kentucky at that point, and all these trees were just this brilliant yellow. And so I took pictures of um, the trees and was using Adobe Color, or yeah, Adobe Color on them to pull color palettes. Do I see Dana's in there, I think? Is it that Maryland one? Oh, I, oh maybe. Yeah. I only Dana know that. Craft design. Yeah, that? I only know that because she did a, a competition medal for a skating competition, and I recognize that, that crab style. I do, I'm not getting any service on my phone, so I can't. So. Oh, no. That's a cliffhanger. Oh. Show that tomorrow. My favorite. Or another time. Yeah, my favorite color is, uh, well, obviously black. Mm. Um, but as far as like drawing and stuff, I love drawing in hot pink. Right now, I have an affinity towards mustard. Oh, interesting. You know that really like, and like my my bedroom right now, it's got a dark gray wall, and then the accent colors are mustard. It just feels very adult to me. Uh, Huzefa, I hope you got your submission in in time. The clock does say zero, zero, zero. And uh, just so you know, we have nine, about 11 to review. Sweet, it's a good amount. There you go. Huzefa, it came through. Fantastic. Well, let me know when you want me to pause so we can start looking at them. Mm -hmm. 
This will be good because I won't we won't end up finishing this today, so I can finish tomorrow and we can do color and all that good stuff tomorrow. Yeah. But very cool. I'm yeah, liking this looking, though. Yeah, I think it's I think it's way really cool. I was like this this I and this M are a little tight and so I may tweak that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um but overall it's feeling pretty okay. Yeah. I think it's I think it's rocking. Looks fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. All right. All right, Kendall just just got yours in, huh? Fantastic. Good, good. So that's probably, yeah. there's probably 12 in here. So uh, actually, let me make sure I'm starting at the right spot. And right there. Sweet. All right, so thank you everybody for submitting yeah. designs. Just so you know, this is all about creating a postcard uh, of maybe your hometown or mm -hmm. really any place, Owen Foster of F Fostoria, Ohio. <laughs> I'm into it. I like it. That's fun. I think yeah. Owen really knows Photoshop, by the way. It's like filling in, uh, you know, an image yeah. inside of the text. Wasn't, wasn't uh, Jesus doing that earlier? He like, could have been. I, was I think he might have been doing image in a text. Image in text. Okay. I like yeah. it. Try using a clipping mask or something. Yeah. Into it. I like that border on the Oh yeah. On the chief there. Yeah. It's really cool. I like it. Looks like you're having fun playing with uh, different yeah. styles and everything too. Ty Tyler Via. Dallas, Texas. Oh, is this a photo composition? Am I seeing like a different like they did a galaxy with the uh with the city there? Yeah, that good good eye. Yep. Very nice. Yeah. I like how the type matches this yeah. outline too. Was that is that an actual part of the building or was that added in? I, I want to say yes, but I don't know. I don't know the Dallas skyline that well. Yeah, I, I would almost say it, it is part of the building because if you look where that flare is, mm -hmm. the flare is it hides it. Yeah, yeah. I think you're right. Great job, Tyler. Uh, Heather Hannay. I like that you mocked it Grand up. Rapids, oh nice. That's a nice mock up. I like that the bridge comes out of the lettering. Mm hmm I like it a lot. Yeah, that's way cool. Great job. Savik. I like that this takes on kind of a vintage play. Kol Kolkata, the city of joy. Oh, did nice. you draw that? I'd be interested in that. Yeah, let us know if you do that because so, that's cool. I like this type. Like this lockup mm -hmm. is nice. Yeah. It's way cool. I like the color with the, I like that orange with that like tan. Mm hmm. It's very nice. Yeah, nice warm feel. Oh, yeah, here we go. Dana. Da Dana Craft Parker. Nice. Yeah, this is this is good. Adelphia, Maryland. Very cool. You gotta love the smiling crab there, huh? Yeah, I That's like the cute. texture she used too. Yeah. It's cute because it kind of feels like a block print. Do you know her? Uh yeah, we we know each other online. We have yet to meet in person, but we're both ice skaters. Oh nice. So that's how we know each other is through like that community prior to this community. That's cool. Jordan. Iowa City. The Very Iowa cool. Hawkeyes. Little mock up. Very cool. Yeah. Very nice. Put one of your stamps there. Yeah. <laughs> Young Eric. Little oh, mock up nice. here as well. I like that you you went different with the postcard and did a, a square version. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. It's a really yeah. nice composition too. Yeah, it's really cool. I love that tight crop, you know, those yeah. colors. Fantastic. Dana Pride, I'm another Dana skater. I, I think I what? recognize your name. Are you in the US Competitive Figure Skater group on Facebook? Because I'm pretty sure I recognize your name. She's been in chat before, and she was lucky yeah. enough to go to Max. She got to go to nice. Max with her daughter. 
Oh, so that's that cool. fun. There's Dana Crab Parker. Yeah. Awesome. First day at issue. Oh, okay, so I guess that's supposed to be the, the stamp spot. I have terrible eyesight, so I can't read that. But I do like the color. I like the little mm -hmm. um the little the Bangladesh Frogia. icon. That's nice. Oh there we go. Sorry. Okay, so uh yeah. Yeah, I think that looks like where a stamp would go. Nice. Yeah, nice cool. work. Yeah. Mike Cates. Good luck Come getting on. out anytime soon. <laughs> There's not much here except crazy drivers and nice sunsets. Good luck getting out anytime soon. I like the sarcasm. <laughs> I also like the playoff. Hill in Texas. Is that East Texas somewhere? Um, yeah, cool. I really do like this. This type and yeah, it must have been during uh, Jesus's. Yeah, I like the um, that it's a play off of the vintage style postcards. Huzefa, check this one out. What, what is happening? Is that a is that? I don't know if it's real or not, but it's awesome. I think it's a composite. Yeah, it looks like a composite, but it looks like are they like attacking a truck? No, it's the it looks like it got overloaded. And oh. like somehow tipped over, I guess. I oh yeah, really I know. see the sand coming out the back. Yeah, this is hilarious. Like this tells a story, which is fascinating. Oh, that's funny. So, I wanna go here. Good job, Josefa. Kindle. Oh, some, uh, some lettering here. Nice, look at the little buffalo. <laughs> hey, Boulder. Boulder, Colorado. Got the flat irons right over here. Da, da, da. Into it. I like the layout. This is nice. Mm hmm. Little B. Cute, cute. I like it. I like it. You mocked it up too. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's really cool. Great work, Kendall. Is that all we Very got? Very good. Nice. So let me just refresh this. Make sure we got them all since this is our last. Oh, we got one more in there. Oh. Made just under the deadline, Joseph Hornus, Horna, Horna, check. Welcome to Washington Township. Michigan? Uh, am I <laughs> Michigan? What's am I? I'm sorry, I feel like an idiot. I do too. I think it's Michigan. Is it Michigan? Okay. That's my <laughs> guess. People correct us if we're wrong, but I think it's Michigan. You know what would be cool. fun is if that little, um, the little ticker board at the bottom mm -hmm. had like a silly message on it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Val says there might be one Missouri. more. Missouri, Missouri? <laughs> I feel like we gotta Google that. Oh, yep, oh, there is one oh, more. Yeah. Reno. I'm here for the all you can Paula eat sushi. Harris. I'm I'm all here for all you can eat sushi. That's awesome. Which I mean, if Reno's known for one thing, it's gonna be sushi. Really? I'm just, no, I'm just joking. Oh. <laughs> I'm gullible. It's probably known for the all you can eat part, just like yeah. any sort of. Uh, yeah, because that's know, what like Nevada is. Is it? Yeah. Is is Reno and are Reno and Vegas nearby each other? Um, I don't know how close, but same state. Oh, okay. I think it's south. I like the I like the color. I like that you have the lettering kind of receded so that it mm -hmm. the focus is the sushi. Yeah, that's good. Good yeah. good use of colors. Mm -hmm. You know, you're right. Because if it was if it was any bolder or more contrast, it'd just be too loud. Yeah, know? and it's and it's really hard to contrast against that that color background because if it um, if if you use that like orange, it would vibrate way too much. Oh if yeah. If you use it for lettering. But That's it, so using true. it, using it as an accent for that, mm -hmm. um, for the salmon, the shrimp, and the sashimi and stuff. Like I, it's, it's just enough to kind of pop it without it being like almost like a visual vibration. Yeah, good, good call, good point. Um, someone it. says, "Where can I see Shauna's work? Should we just like, should we pull up that Behance?" Sure, 
I yeah. got that. I got I got all the things. Info. This is where you can find her. Info. Yes. Following. But click right on her yes. or her little dog. Yep, that's and my puppy. And you have a nice banner at the top. I do. Actually, front. you know what? I made that for, I have all of my, my greeting cards on Postable, which is a fantastic website, especially if you need to capture people's addresses. Um, and I had to make a banner for it because they, I licensed my cards to them. Mm. And I was like, well, I'm going to try and see if it works here too. It does. It looks way cool. I love anytime you have kind of like a hidden line, there's, you know, you kind of lose it here and stuff yeah. is nice. But it's fun because I finally hit a point where I feel like my visuals in Behance are all kind of feeling like a family. Oh, yeah. Totally. But I also used Dimension originally to try and do those coffee cups because. Oh, there we are. Yeah, they're yeah. Photoshop mock-ups now, but I tried Dimension for those. Yeah. But with Dimension, like I, you would have had to draw, I would have had to draw them like this so that they wrapped correctly. Hmm. And I did not have that energy to figure it out. I'd already drawn the whole thing. That's very cool. I've had a lot of good ones. I really like, uh, shout out to Dana's. Mm -hmm. this, uh, Dana Craft Parker did a fantastic job. Paula Harris did a great job. This one, Boulder. Kendall did a fantastic, I mean, everybody did a great job. I think uh, Jan Eric did a great job too, uh, you know, with his. Yeah, I like I love the colors on that one. I really it's a it's really nice. Yeah, it's certainly it's interesting to look at all of these and just kind of see which one stands out. Like if they were all laying on the table, like which ones jump out at you? Yeah, I haven't even seen the morning ones. Can we just like scroll through so oh, I can you see them have, all? Yeah. Like we don't have to go one by one. I just want to peek at like what's what's been done. Is that a giant elk? Oh, Estes Park. Awesome. <laughs> I love that people are using the photo compositing skills that they learn this that they're learning this week. Yeah, we do not have deers that big, just so you know. Thank goodness, because that would be terrifying. <laughs> right. Steps in, it steps into the road. Oh hello. <laughs> you can't pass. So yeah, that's these are all of them. So we kinda have to, you know, kinda we will select one after mm -hmm. hours. Um after we get all the bribes in. Just kidding. All the bribes. Yeah. Sure. Bribe me with um, sushi. But there's some great ones. Like here's a Georgetown. This, this Ooh, one's nice too. That's really lovely. I like Georgetown. the I like the typeface Anna. they used. Yeah. And I like tea. that they Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah. Those kind of typefaces too are really fun, especially if the person that does them um, programs in alternates. So that as you type, if you have two A's in a row, they look different. Mm. And it makes it look less like a font and more like it's hand lettered. If you do what again? So if you, like, when you program fonts, like I, I, uh, okay. I crash coursed myself through glyphs and you can program in um, what are called alternates. Mm -hmm. And as long as you have them active as you're typing, if you have like two A's in a row and you've made more than one A, as oh. long as it's been programmed, it won't repeat the same A. Oh, that's cool. Um, that's pretty fascinating. Yeah, I'll have to, I don't know if I have. This font has a lot of alternates too. Somebody mentioned this this Toronto one. This is uh, Lust Script Pro, which has a ton of awesome alternates. Yeah, I did. The um, City of Multiculturalism. Look at this. Nice. Oh, that's a nice You know, type just kind of curve through here Is that too. Lust? Yeah. Yeah, that's um, Pause Type did that one, right? I do not know, but it, I should know because it's my favorite font. Jan Eric, yeah, I agree. That one is fantastic. And Jan Eric, yours is great as well. So shout out to everybody. Did a fantastic job. Um, yeah. And everything. I'm looking to see if I have my typeface on here. Great. I'm not sure I do anymore. Some, oh, I don't have it open now, but no, we'll have to talk about some font features. So yeah, I used to have mine on here, and I, I guess I took it off at some point. I have one where I. What are you I, looking for? Oh, one of my typefaces. Oh. I went and I, my my very first one, I got really um, ambitious. So like on my creative market, you can see that I like programmed in like I had three different alphabets for every letter. Oh really? Wow, that's so much work. 
That's like was. that's yeah. That you're making three different like typefaces. Yeah, and it was capitals and lowercases. Wow. And then I had to program it. And thankfully, I have a friend. She, I have a friend who works at Hallmark as a as a type designer. And so she she texted me and she's like, "Listen, I know you're jumping in to the deep end. So if you need help, let me know." Um. So. And my creative market is also under Shauna Parmesan. So if anyone wants to buy the brushes I've made, I've made a bunch. Nice. I'm gonna just drop that. Uh, here we go. Um, Heather, uh, we met, you missed your feedback. We really liked yours, by the way. Just yeah. a little shout out to you because this is just other ones. Yeah, we as liked you kind of fill that in real fast, just everybody gets you know they put in hard work here. Yeah, I think this works out great. I think it's yeah, cool. I think it's it's very nicely. Um, it's a nice composition, and I like the that the bridge kind of pops out of there, but yeah. it's still it's still contained in the S at the bottom, mm -hmm. but it works really, really well. Yeah, I think it's cool. You could say, oh, I can't read it. Well, you can, let's face it. Like, yeah. You can, it, it might be, some, like you don't need to read every single letter, and I think that's what your, your uh, artwork kind of shows. You, yeah, you, and if- As long as you don't screw with the first and last letter, yeah. what else is it gonna be? Grand Rapids? No, people are gonna, they're gonna know it's Grand Rapids. Like, give me a yeah. break. Yeah, like there's and there's even a, psychologi a, a psychology study where it's, if you have like the word hello, as long as the first and last letter are correct, you can read everything in between and your your brain will still read it correctly. Mm -hmm. I used it for a science project once because it was already a set study and I ended up going to state with it. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that's cool. Like, what does that mean, going to state? I, I did the local science fair, oh, and then okay. I did the regional science fair, and then my mom and I were sitting in the audience, and they were announcing the winners, and she goes, I swear to God, if you, she goes, if you win with this stupid project, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna laugh, and I, go, and I took first place, so I got to go to state science fair. Very cool. It was the only reason I passed chemistry that year, because I was awful at chemistry. So I went to my teacher with my my first place um, ribbon, and I go, I'm going to state. Can I get extra credit? That's awesome. And they were like, Yes. Otherwise, she, we're holding you back. Yeah. No, she no. she looked at me. She goes, I'll see what I can do. And she I got to be that semester or that year. So I was able to thankfully pass chem. Mm -hmm. Like I promise, I'm smart. I'm just not chemistry smart. Give me psychology any day, I can do that. Yeah, into it. Uh, yeah, Heather, glad we were able to cover it. Grand Rapids, kind of a cool, I've been there. I've been to a lot of places. I was, I spoke but. at a conference there a couple months ago. Oh, really? Yeah, it was. Um, How f far away is, like, did you fly there or drive? I was, I was still in Florida, so I had to okay. fly. Gotcha. Um, it was a UCDA conference, so it was a conference for like teachers. And I taught a workshop there, um, like a three hour lettering workshop that turned out to be really fun and I want to do it again somewhere. And um, then I spoke the following day. And it was also nice and cold and I got to see my friend Molly Jakes when I was out there. Nice. I really like, I mean, knowing that you're gonna get into color tomorrow, I'm kind of, I'm definitely like interested in the, yeah, the I'm, way you're gonna go with it. And I'm currently just like on your side, kind of. Yeah, I'm thinking because of like the aesthetic of Haunted Mansion, it's gonna be something with these more like vibrant tones. And I really, okay. I love this image here. Yeah. Um, just like that the, is cool. These these really nice purples, these nice golds and greens, like they're these really lovely jewel tones. And I think that's gonna possibly work really well for this. Yeah. And right now you're just. You're you're filling in these letters. These mm -hmm. letters won't be black. They could right. be black, but they, you, yeah, you they, haven't gotten to coloring just yet. They won't end up being black. And actually, what I'll end up doing is doing um, uh, layer uh, yeah, layer clipping mask. mask. Yes, clipping mask. Clipping yeah. mask, so that I can take whatever color I choose and I can go over it. You know, and I could even go so far as to like do one color and then. I saw that. Kind of fade it to another color. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, and it would, and then I don't ruin my um, 
Kind of like what you did here. Uh, this might be an example of the clipping mask. Is that correct? Yep, that's exactly what I did. I drew yeah. the whole thing just in white white pencil, so my pencil tool, mm -hmm. and um, then I went over it with clipping masks, and then the white on top of that was a separate layer that I added in so that it had some energy. Mm -hmm. I actually think I submitted this one to. Um, to Com Arts, so fingers crossed I get into the, into the illustration annual. Yeah. Because if I do, I'll... I believe it. Great things will happen for you. Yeah. I just, I want the says. silver trophy so I can stick it on the wall. <laughs> ah. I want to have a, I want to get the trophy with my name on it and then just build a shelf right next to my computer and sit it there and stare at it for a few days. Mm. Nice. I've been fortunate to get into Com Arts one time and it was 2000 and 11 and it was that world of foot poster because the agency that I interned at submitted it oh, and they nice. credited me on the project and it ended up getting a full page spread in comments that is which is really one of cool. these which one is it that that was one. very bottom oh, okay the very and that was oh, the one you know, that, just my just one of my earlier pieces well, and that was one where like because at the time Instagram wasn't around Twitter wasn't around and Facebook was still very in its younger stages. So if you wanted to get work and get seen, you had to get into these annuals. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was like, because that got into the annual, it it led to several other jobs doing kind of something similar. So like when they, when it, a client reached out to them and contacted the agency, they said, who, you know, would you, are you, do you guys do this? Um, like, who, who's your artist that did this? Because we'd love to do this. And instead of do, saying, like, we'll do it internally, they referred them to me. Nice. And then that's how that Dita Von Teese piece, uh, piece came about. And then that was followed by a piece where I got to draw on a picture of No Doubt for the same company. Nice. That's very cool. And it's, it's fun. You can kind of see that progression like you yeah created one awesome one and other people wanted a piece of ya. yeah and it's it's fun because like once you get something that's that people really really like you kind of it's a, like the reason you want to always keep improving is because you'll get hired to play your greatest hits over and over so mm -hmm. for like a good year if not longer I got hired to do that exact same thing over and over and over again so my free time was spent creating other things so mm -hmm. that I started to get hired for other things yeah very cool. Well, we're kind of winding down. Um, you know, Jamie, uh, just to kind of answer the question, how do you get noticed? Uh, how do you get noticed to get work? Basically, is what you're asking in graphic design. Like, just do stuff. Get involved in these daily challenges. Yeah. We're giving you a reason, like something to do, that will turn into a, a, a piece, which will turn into a portfolio, which will, you know, potentially turn into work. Wherever you want to mm -hmm. take it. And you never know like who's watching your work. You never know who's gonna see what you're doing. So share, yeah. you know, share the work that you want to do. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't want to draw, you know, say you don't want to draw, um, you know, for children's books, don't do a children's book illustration and put it out there because I guarantee you that's probably what you'll get hired to do, and you're gonna hate your life. <laughs> you know, you're yeah. not, and you're not required if you do client work. You're not required to share it all. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't, you know, if you're not happy with how it turned out, if the client kind of went rogue and wanted to change a bunch of things, you're not required to, to share in your portfolio ever. I have work that I've never put in my portfolio because I just, I don't like the final outcome of it, but it was a paying job. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have others that I have, you have to wait like a year sometimes for it to go live and get it out there. Um, I did a book cover July of last year and I have to wait for it to, um, to be released before I can share it and put it on my my portfolio. That's cool. Well, we're really into how this is coming together. Excited for yes. tomorrow as we, uh, you know, kind of see this come to life with color mm -hmm. and uh, where it ends up. It's going to be fun. Yeah. So. So. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks everybody for hanging out. Shauna, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, of Paul. Course. So You're doing all the work. I'm just like, hey, that's neat. Hey, what are you doing? That's pretty neat, too. Yeah. What about superheroes? <laughs> so whoever said that earlier, you can go back to watching The Punisher. Yes. I love that. That's such a compliment when you, you know, we can, yeah. you watch us instead of. Exactly. You know, 
but we're live, quite frankly. And we'll be live tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Exactly, and we'll we'll color this in tomorrow, so I'll finish it tonight, and we'll get it to color tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Yay. Thank you so much, Shauna. Thanks, everybody, Thank for you. joining us. Bye. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Thank mm -hmm. you.